Why are you thinking this guy is running as a skill tree right now? If you say 1233 or 963, you guys are wrong. You will not believe it. So watch the whole thing to find out. What is up guys, Johnny here once again, I'm back with more Shadowgun Legends and Massacrator is back on the channel today, he agreed to give me another interview yesterday, I asked him a couple questions on Messenger and he agreed to answer all my questions. Massacrator is now number one on the leaderboard with over 13 million fame. If you watch my previous video with Massacrator, I just came across this guy randomly and I said he was a super cool guy compared to some other top players that I met in the past. That were acting a bit like douchebags this guy is very nice he gave me an interview a couple months ago it was a very nice one he gave me a lots of tips for new pvp players or players that want to get into pvp if you inspect massacrator's profile and you check his stats you will see that out of his 13 million fame it's almost half from pvp and half from pve he's got like almost 7 million fame from pvp but another 6 million fame from pve you ran about a thousand co-ops. So I asked Massacrator, what's your favorite method for farming fame? He said his number one favorite is Ascendancy in PvP. But his second method for farming fame is Brothers of Fire Dungeon. What Brothers of Fire, really? Well, look at these medals, guys. If you check the PvE ribbons and medals, he's got over 400 Brothers of Fire complete. Compared to Voltaic Fist and Blade Dancer, he's got 50 Volt 70 Blade and about 100 Arenas. That's after the 0.6 update when they first introduced these new ribbons. But really 400 Brothers of Fire, why exactly? I'm sure you guys know there's a Nitro mission for completing 5 dungeons. It will give you 5000 fame. Brothers of Fire is the quickest, the fastest dungeon around. If you run with a good squad and you run often, you can complete the Brothers of Fire between 3 and 4 minutes and mostly 3 and a half. That's very quick. You'll do like 5 dungeons in about 20 minutes. That is 5,000 fame on top of the ribbons you get for completing the dungeons. Also, you get the ribbons for completing under 10. So you get double ribbons every time. On top of that, you'll get the A squad ribbons if your team don't die. And a lot of other ribbons for using the skills and stuff like that. But if you just check the Brothers of Fire ribbon, if you do 400 dungeons, divide by 5. It's 80 times 5,000 fame for free just for doing it. So just quick maths, but the Nitro missions for only the Brothers of Fire he did is probably around half a million fame just for the Nitro mission. But on top of that, you add all the other ribbons and the skill ribbons and the A squad ribbons. That's a lot of fame guys. So that's what they do on their free time. They run a bunch of Brothers of Fire. The thing that people like about Massacrator is this guy is 100% legit. And you can see he doesn't even have the casino ribbons. Massacrator spent over 52 days in the game. That's almost twice what I spent. And I thought I played a lot. I asked him how much time you spend in a day. He said I don't count, but it's probably around 6 hours a day. Now that's a lot of play time. Now Massacrator likes to play around with different weapons. On my previous video, he said he really liked auto rifles for PvP. It says it gives you an advantage because of the range. I asked him last night, what are your favorite weapons now? And he said his favorite primary weapon is now the Plasma Blaster. I ran across him the other day, he was playing Plasma Blaster in PvP. His favorite secondary is now the Slate Shitstorm. Slate Shitstorm is widely available now because the drop rates were increased lately and Voltaic Fist is dropping a bunch of these. Very easy to get. If you play PvP lately, you probably noticed everyone's running Shitstorm right now. It's crazy. Now his favorite pistol is not the Ostrich, it's the Mother's Promise. He does not have it on his main account, but he has a secondary account. Believe it or not, he has time to play on two accounts. But he has the Mother's Promise on his other account, and he says it's his favorite pistol. I asked Massacrator what's his favorite game mode in the whole game. He said 100% Ascendancy. Now the best part, guys, I asked Massacrator if he wanted to share a screenshot of his skill tree, and he agreed. He sent me a screenshot. You guys will not believe it. Look at that. Now this is Massacrator's skill tree right now. He sent me yesterday was just under 13 million fame. So you see this screenshot is very recent. 8 agility, 1 combat, and 9 survival. What? 
not expected this is definitely not one of the most popular builds right now everyone's running 1233 or 963 this is different from what we're used to see but we can try to understand why what are the advantage what do you lose and what do you gain by using this skill tree now eight points in agility is very easy to understand all the popular builds have at least eight points of agility why because it gives you access to all the mobility skills the movement passive skill the reload speed skill you also get the grease lightning to sprint faster but most importantly the one thing that you miss the most when you use the loot build is the reload while sprinting this is super important you don't want to start walking around just because you have to reload if you ever played with and without you know how big it is so eight points in agility is pretty standard right now now why so many points in survival everyone is running at least three points in survival mostly because you gain access to the extra health and also the extra auto heal boost it's all about survivability but the extra three points also give you three points of health which is not a big deal but three points and 15 points is a lot. But why would you want so much? Why nine points? At six points of survival, you gain access to the melee resistance. It's gonna increase your survivability a little bit. Melee resistance might not be a big deal in PvP, it is pretty good in pve though second thing you get at nine points of survival is the projectile resistance when this thing is maxed you get an extra five percent projectile resistance that means you take less damage from bullets which is also good that means you take less damage from bullets but one more thing that might be overlooked is the flag jacket skill when this thing is maxed out you gain 25 percent resistance to explosions you play pvp recently it's all about rocket launcher, grenade, rocket launcher, grenade, grenade, rocket launcher. It's just explosions everywhere. So if you're running an extra 25% resistance to explosion on your skill tree and explosion resistance on your boots, then it might increase your chance to do good in PvP, guys. That explains the nine points. You get projectile resistance, you get explosion resistance. So with nine in survival and eight in agility, we have one point left. I guess you guys could try and put it pretty much anywhere you like. You could go agility for extra crit damage. You can go survival for just a little extra HP. But Massacrator decided to put one point in combat. Of course, it's not for the sentry gun. Nobody used that right now. But with six agility and one combat, you unlock the iron sight damage, which is very good in PvE if you're farming dungeon. I know some guys will also use it a lot in PvP, depends on your playstyle, but it is a lot of extra damage at the end so that pretty much sums up the 819 build that massacrator like to use so much right now and i know this video will probably change the meta a lot if everyone start running the extra explosion resistance the grenades and rocket launchers will be much less effective now now last couple questions to massacrator i asked him do you have a nemesis what player you hate to face because he kills you a lot and he said bacon or it spells 3 a k o n bacon from the pvp guild and i also asked him at the end what he would like to see change in the game massacrator is passionate about this game for sure but like a lot of us he said exactly the same thing we hear so many times he says the game still have a lot of bugs and every time they try to fix some bugs um new bugs appear which is uh, frustrating at times, of course. And I know a lot of you guys feel the same, but he feels the company maybe is not so consistent. And he said at the rate it's going, it might take years to see a full game that is fully functional. Well, gotta stay positive. I feel the game is doing so much better than it was six months ago. These top players are still playing after such a long time. They must be doing something right. I know there's a lot of good things coming soon to the game. It will be very refreshing to see the new gold arena all the new events coming every week so that will be it already for today's video big shout out to massacrator thank you so much for answering all my questions it is really appreciated it's a big help to the community i'm sure this video will change the way people play the game i would have liked to have him on the voice chat of course but you know uh, as i said in my previous video um english is not his first language he did not feel too comfortable uh coming to the voice chat for an interview but he did agree to answer all the questions so once again thank you so much 
and thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video i did have a lot of fun making this one so leave a like if you enjoyed make sure you subscribe to the channel for more shadow gun legends news gameplay and guides i will be back soon until then watch my other videos take care